Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green and I am the manager of the Swindon Town Swoodley Poopers who today are taking on Colchester here in the N-Power League One. Um, I'm going to talk today about, you know, I'm starting to get to know the players. So I want to introduce you to some of them based on my interactions with them. But I, I want to begin with Leroy Williamson, who of course, of course uh, joined uh, John Green and John Green in the TARDIS. Um, which was a big surprise to me because Leroy Williamson always seemed committed to the to the team, um, but I never imagined that he would, uh, you know, that he would end up a you know, guy. Anyway, I just never imagined that he would be the guy who decides that he wants to come over. Um, there's sea stuff. He's seen some stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, so I want to talk. I want to talk a little bit about about Mr. Williamson, and then in the second half, I want to talk about the fascinating uh, story in life of uh, one of my favorite of the new Swoodly Poopers, um, Bostock. We call him Chicken Bostock because he's Beefstock's cousin. Um, fascinating guy. By the way, we're on top of the table. Um, so that's good. Look at our goal differential. That's a beauty. All right. So today uh, we are, of course, starting as usual, John Green and John Green. But they are not starting up front. I'm putting John Green on the wing today just to see if that might help a little. I'm putting Leroy Williamson up front. Maybe he'll get a goal. Um, since we're going to talk about him. So, um, I mean, I guess the reason I was surprised that, that uh, Leroy Williamson chose to get in the, in the TARDIS is that I've never known much about his personal life, but he's always been a really quiet guy, and I never figured that he was... I, I, I figured he was loyal to Swindon. I mean, you know, obviously he started with Swindon in, in League One and, and, you know, worked his heart out for, for the club um, for, you know, for many, many years. So I knew that he was serious. I knew that he liked the club. I knew... I mean, I knew that, you know, he listened to me as a manager and stuff. Like, he never... Never, never asked really for anything. Um, but I just, you know, I never, I just didn't seem like a guy who would come over. And then when we were packing up the TARDIS to head on over to FIFA 13, he just showed up and he was like, Coach, I can't, uh, I can't leave. I can't, I can't, I can't, or I, Coach, I can't stay. I can't, um, I can't imagine, you know, being, being here um, without you guys. And that was when, that, that was when it sort of dawned on me that even though he's a quiet guy who never, uh, you know, never really talks or socializes much. Um, you know, John Green and John Green are probably his best friends in the world. Uh, you know, he's a guy who loves football, and that's what he does. Um, you know, he wakes up in the morning and he plays, and I think the reason that he's so much better than his statistics would indicate is because he's just relentless, a relentless trainer, relentless practicer. He's the first guy on the field. Frankly, he's there when I get there for practice. Um, and he's the last guy to leave. And that, um, you know, that's just the kind of person he is. Uh, and that's, I think, sometimes those people go a little bit unnoticed. You know, they fly a little bit under the radar because they don't, um, they aren't the, the showy ones. They don't score a lot of goals. They aren't ostentatious. They, they just, you know, they just, they just have that work rate. That's, that's what it's called in football. Is, oh, schmerg. That's all right. We'll get him. We'll get him back. It's called, you know, they have the work rate. And if you look at what's, what's called the heat map, Leroy Williamson's heat map, the amount of time that he spends, look at him on the ball right now. I mean, you know, that guy, you don't think he wants it? Um, his, his heat map is better than anyone else's on the club um, consistently, both in FIFA 11 and FIFA 13. And I think that just speaks to, th see, there he is again. It just speaks to how, um, how important it is to him to find himself in kind of the right place at the right time. Um, so, yeah, he's and, – and I think – but it, it's interesting that, like, even though he's not – Oh, off the post! Oh, Leroy Williamson wanted that so bad, but he couldn't get in. Um, it's interesting that even though he's not a guy who scores a lot of goals and he's not even a guy that we know a lot about, he's become a fan favorite. So, anyway, I asked him – I asked him a few – I asked him – I told him I was going to talk about him to the fans if that was okay with him, and he said – he was a little bit embarrassed about it, but he said it was okay. Um, so I asked him what he does for fun. He said that he plays soccer for fun. I asked him if he does anything else for fun. He says that uh, sometimes he plays FIFA, <laughs> uh, which is weird. I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't know the extent to which these guys are really aware of their, I mean, not fictionality, but he, he's certainly more aware of his multidimensionality than most people because he's been, you know, in a TARDIS and everything. He's traveled through time and space and FIFA levels. But, um, but yeah, he likes to play FIFA. So there you go. There's FIFA inside of FIFA. What's inside of that FIFA? I don't know. It's a Matryoshka doll. Could be more FIFA. Um, but, uh, you know, he's just, he's a guy who really deeply loves soccer. So um, I asked him if he had any favorite books. Uh, his favorite book is uh, 
<laughs> his favorite book is called Inverting the Pyramid. It is a book about the history of soccer tactics. It is very interesting. I have read it, but I wouldn't say that it's my favorite book. I wouldn't say it's the best book ever written or anything. Leroy Williamson's a huge fan of it, though, and more power to him. Um, uh, he does not watch a lot of television. Uh, he, does, he does like the occasional movie. Um, he uh, really liked this movie about Leeds United that came out from the guy who directed uh, The King's Speech. Um, but he also likes some non... He likes, like, superhero kind of movies, he said. Oh! Oh! That would have been a beauty. Um, so your Iron Man's, your Iron Man's, too. It is disappointing. Um, all right, we've just got to... we got to we gotta get focused. All right, so that's... that's So hopefully now you at least have a little bit better sense of, of Leroy Williamson as a person. Um, he may be moving out to the wing because this has not been a very successful pairing, it has to be said. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to move John Greens, and I'm going to do this. Yeah, I think that's the right call. As that makes, that essentially turns... Yeah, that's a good call. That's a good decision. All right. Um, now, as for, uh, as for Mr. Bostock, um, who is uh, Beefstock's cousin, um, there's some adoption involved. They... Uh, I, so I, 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 I didn't know this guy at all. He's, he's an English guy. Um, I didn't know anything about him, though. Like, never, never heard of him, never saw him as a player, anything like that. Um, but he is, like, a... I, I mean, there's no other way to say it other than, like, he's just an intellectual, like an actual, like, self-taught intellectual. Like, he could be a professor at a university kind of intellectual. Like, he reads Foucault for fun. Um, and uh, he's a, just a fascinating character because here's a guy he's a really talented football player I don't think I think it's safe to say that at this point he hasn't quite lived up to his potential he's only 22 so you know you got to be patient but um he is really talented but um you know he doesn't yeah he, he just I don't know that his head's all the way in the game right now like I don't you know I think he's young and maybe a little bit resentful of the way that, that, that uh, soccer um, took away his uh, childhood and, and sort of formal education. I mean, one of the things, you know, he's, he's a, a youth academy, an academy guy, and, um, you know, you, you go to school, but it's not the same level of education that you would get at, you know, an American university or something. It's definitely not that. Oh, you've got to finish in that situation, sir. You've got to just calm down and finish. Oh, it's disappointing. At least Mr. Bean isn't playing anymore. Uh, Meredith, please remind me to try to get Mr. Bean from Colchester during the January break. Um, all right. Yeah, so i got to get Mr. Bean. That is very important. Um, i also got to get Gin Ginger Rampage back, and I miss Sir Swoodley Pooper Cuthbert. He's not very good, but he's got heart. Can't put a price on heart. Um, except for Joe Hart. He's worth like $100 million. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, gosh. There, everything worked out better than expected. So, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't mean like, you know, so we talked about it because I, I told him that I felt like, I, I was just honest with him. I was like, you know, most of the sort of like self-taught intellectuals I know are sort of Ayn Rand, Kurt Vonnegut, um, Albert Camus self-taught intellectuals, um, you know, including, by the way, myself. Um, and here he is, he's reading, like, he was reading the Cambridge History of Apoc Apocalypticism, um, because we've got a really, uh, fascinatingly, uh, evangelical guy on the team, Lionel Richie, um, who is, like, f comes from an evangelical religious background, um, but is, like, you know, very, oh gosh, Green Eggs and Fodringham, giving us the chance that we need. It's time, it's time to make some changes. You know what this game needs, Meredith? Needs a little Andy Rooney. Mmm. That boy can strike the ball. Leroy Williamson, you had a... Mm, not, not your best game, let's face it. Let's be honest with each other. Um, and then... Um, yeah, I'm going to bring in... I'm going to do that. I'm going to put it the stronger John Green in. Bostock is exhausted, and I understand. He's probably also embarrassed. I'm going to bring on Jerry Coke. Um, and... Uh, and maybe somebody for ver we call him Bob. Mm. Yeah, and then I'm gonna move Richie. No, no, I'm just gonna do that. 
Whatever, it's unconventional, but you know, that's who I am as a player. I hope you guys all got to hear me burp, by the way. Meredith, was that audible? It was awesome. Yeah. Welcome to the party, friends. Um, so, yeah, I, but uh, we were talking about that, and, and he was like, yeah, I went through that phase, and I was like, that phase of, of, of reading uh, Ayn Rand and, and everybody, and he was like, yeah, I went, th I went through, it was like a phase, and then I got out of it, and I was like, what do you mean you got out of it? And he was like, well, I just realized that there was a lot of other stuff to read, and so now he's just reading, like, really hardcore stuff. Is that me? Is that supposed to be me? That, that dumpy, middle-aged, balding guy? I refuse to accept that. He's the Colchester coach. Come on, boys. Come on. You're strong enough. That's in the goal. That's in the goal. Oh. Oh. Yes. John Green to John Green. John Green's John Green's ball. Another John Green's at the best forwards that Swindon Town has ever seen. Come on, boys. Let's get this. Let's get this win for Leroy Williamson and Bostock, both now out of the game due to exhaustion. But let's get the win for them. Let's get that win. We can do this. This is a winnable game. Mm, it's also a losable game. Also a losable game. Woo, everything worked out better than expected. Okay. All right. Well, all we have to do is mount an attack. We're going to mount an attack. As opposed to all the other things we could mount right now. But no, we're going to choose not to do that. Instead, we're going to mount an attack. That's a good ball. Why not out to, why not out to John Green? Why not have John Green do that? What? Well, obviously not. What is this? John Green plays FIFA 11 number six? What the heck just happened? Green eggs in Fodringham. I like it when they show him because he is an American hero. He's British, but still. Oh, 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 get in there. Go, 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 go. I know you're tired. I know you're tired. I know you're tired. Run it down. Run it down for your club and for your country. Oh, it's in the net! Oh, what a... It's Andy Rooney! It's Andy Rooney! It's a ginger! Andy Rooney, Andy Rooney, Andy Rooney has a soul! Andy Rooney! Oh, look at that! On his weak foot, falling away from the goal. And in the 90th minute, my heroic substitution, Andy Rooney. Has the manager ever looked more brilliant than he does today? Bringing a ginger in right at the right moment to ensure the win. Oh, my. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, everything is fine. Oh. Swoodly Pooper football is back, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Let's go ahead and get a third. Let's get a third. Let's get a third. Why not? Why not John Green to maybe Andy Rooney? Andy Rooney back post. Oh not going to happen. But you know what, friends? We did win. Oh, we were 1-0 down to Colchester, and then we win 2-1 thanks to goals from John Green and Andy Rooney and an excellent performance from Wes Crusher Fodringham. Oh, he's an ensign. Thank you for watching. Best wishes.